Hello there and welcome back to the Signal 1.5 training. In this video we're going to be talking about the time remap in the noise tab. So, and a little bit of BPM. So let's jump right on in. Now, right away you should see that we've got this tree here and I've got it all rigged up and the rig is, is fairly straightforward. It's just a bunch of joints, really straightforward with some IK tags with some dynamics on them. And the entire thing is being driven by a signal setup here with some time remapped noise. So let's just hit play and see what we got here. So, that is super fun. I really like it. And now let's go ahead and generate this animation pretty much from scratch. I'm going to go and turn off those displacements just so it runs a little bit faster. But the main dancing tree bit we're going to create now from scratch. So I'm going to delete those signal tags off. And now we're just dealing with this null. So what this null is, is it's got all the other joints in there. And it kind of drives it. So when we move this or rotate it, everything else is going to follow. So that's what we want to control. So if I were to, uh, I'm going to mute. If I were to hit play right now. You see that's just there's a little bit of wiggle in the tentacles, but ignore that. The tree isn't doing anything. We need it to be doing something. So let's go ahead and kind of do a new signal tag. And what do we want to control? Well, we want to control the rotation. I want the H, P, and B on there. So I'm going to grab uh, rotation, or the R for rotation, drop it all onto the signal tag. And now it's driving all three of those. So let's go ahead and add a noise tab. And inside of noise, I want a bunch of rotation. So let's go ahead and set that up to 45, 45, 45. Lots of motion. We can even give it a little bit of bias so it's a little bit more contrast uh, on the peaks. And let's just hit play and see what we got there. Let's turn on some audio there too. All right, so we've got the tree you know, certainly wiggling around, but it's not doing it to the beat at all. It's not moving in any kind of precise way. So we, to control it in a more precise way, we need to turn on time remap. Now, to get a little more detailed into what this does, right now, every tab in signal is driven via time. Something moves forward a frame, and then it calculates one frame forward. Now, when we turn on the time remap, time is no longer being fed into this noise tab. It is now a parameter that we drive. So as I move this up, and I guess I'd probably have to be hitting play, so I'm going to mute it. I'd have to, uh, as I tick this frame forward and forward and forward, it's progressing as if that's time. If I were to start dragging this at a somewhat regular pace, you can see how it's kind of moving around and doing animation. So we can now drive that animation via something else. So that something else is going to be another signal tag. We're going to drive it with beats per minute. So I'm going to right click on animate and let's create another signal tag. And what do we want to control? We want to control the time remap. So let's drag that directly onto the signal tag. And let's create a BPM tab. And inside the BPM, the first most important thing is that we need some sort of variation. So let's go ahead and give it five. So it's essentially five frames it's saying to progress. Right now, if I know for a fact this song is 130 beats per minute. Uh, if you want to see the full video on the on the BPM tab, go watch the BPM video. I highly, highly suggest you do. There's a lot of complexity hidden behind this fairly simple interface. But anyway, uh, let's go ahead and hit play. Let's get some audio going and let's see what this is doing now that we're driving with the beat. So this is definitely on the beat now. You can see it's progressing forward and kind of it's kind of like head bobbing right now. And it's hitting right on those beats because we got quarter notes running on this 130 BPM. And that's great, but it's it's always going to just, just keep doing that same thing over and over again. And the reason for that, let's turn off the audio. Uh, the reason for that is if I hit play, you can see that this number is shooting up and then fading back down again. So what we, what we actually want to have happen is it should go forward and then go forward again and then forward again. So we're gonna jump back in the BPM tab to make that happen. So there's two things we need to do to make that happen. Right now it's shooting up, but then fading back down again. I wanna say, don't fade back down again. Let's give it a little more time to make that transition as well. And then we need to say additive. So I'm gonna turn on additive and then we should immediately see the results when I hit play. But let me explain real quick what's happening is this spline is being mapped onto each of these beats. But now it's set to additive, and this is going up. It doesn't fade back down to nothing. So because it's going up, it's actually traveling along, and then traveling along again, and then traveling along, and it's constantly climbing higher and higher and higher. So if I hit play, let's give it a listen. It is now moving forward 
constantly to a newer value. Let's mute it, and I'm going to jump to the output. And you can see when I hit play, that's constantly jumping up another five frames of motion. So it's like remapped time, which is incredibly useful. And what's cool is we've got this entire tree here. It's all set up and it's doing its thing. And let's see if this works. I'm going to copy and paste it. And now I've got a brand new copy of this tree. It's going to pop into position there. But when I uh, hit play, it's going to jump over. And you can see they're doing the exact same animation. They get the same BPM and the same noise. But what's cool is I can go into the second tree and I can jump into its random noise. So we can go to the noise tab and I'm going to change its random seed to anything else. I can tick it up one higher. So now they're still driven by the same beats, but they have different seeds. So now we've got two trees. Let's hit. So we've got two different seeds driving two different trees. So we have a completely unique dance for each of them, but they're still both hitting on the beat. So time remap is so much fun. I've been like obsessively using it. It's a, it's a tiny setting, but it makes so much difference, especially on something like color. So let's jump into a new file. We're going to keep this one simple. Let's jump into a new file. I'm going to create a sphere. And let's go ahead and control the color of the sphere. So I'm going to go to the basic tab, change use color from off to on, and let's set this display color to black. So it's just a solid black. Let's right click and add a signal tag. And what do we want to control? We want to control that display color. So let's drop that on there. You could do this with a material or any parameter you want to, but let's just start out with this color and it's nice and simple doing it this way. So what do we want to control? Well, I want some noise and that noise is going to control the color. Now, when I set up color, I always like to turn off all, I start out black, I turn off all the negative values and then put it on pure white. So you see this outputting up to pure white. So it's only feeding positive numbers up to white. So we're starting in the darkest possible color and it can has the potential of going up to the lightest possible color. So if I were to hit play right now, it's a nice straightforward noise. We could always do this and we could change the speed to speed that up and we can change the variation to change that. And the, an important value here is something like uh, bias. I'm gonna crank the bias up and that's gonna make it so that we're hitting the low value and the high value more often and what that means is that we're going to get higher saturation colors. So that's all that that's doing. But now we want to time remap this. We want this to be hitting on a beat. And in fact, why don't we jump back into the dancing tree and I'm going to steal this camera because that camera has my sound on it. I'm going to paste that in here. So now if I play, I thought it had the sound on it. I probably have to save this into the other file. Actually, uh, to keep this straightforward, I'm going to copy the sphere and I'm actually going to just paste it into the tree file because I just want to hear, hear some audio so that uh, we can be doing this on an actual beat. So let me hit play. Oh, I have mute on. I, the copy paste worked, but I had mute on. So I'm going to hit play. Very loud. Um, so now we have a beat that we can run to. We already know it's 130 beats a second. And if you want to know how to import sound in the cinema, make sure you check out the beats per minute video included in this series. So anyway, we've got the sphere and we want to progress it forward based on noise, same way we did on the tree. So let's right click, add a new signal tag. What are we driving? We are driving the time remap. I forgot to turn it on. Let's turn it on. Drag time remap on the signal tag. And let's go to that new signal tag. We'll make it a BPM base. And I want to do that additive again. So I'm going to delete this final point. Let's have it arc forward here nice and smooth. And in fact, we could probably even make that really long if we want to and give it a long runway there. So it's going to shoot up and then slowly go out. And then we need to turn on additive. And very, very important, you need to go to variation and turn that on. I want this to progress forward five frames. So let's hit play and see what we get. Boom, boom. So now you can see the color is changing every beat and it is progressing forward. So if we give this a nice long remap, you can see it is doing a little transition between them on that. And I want that to be a fairly high contrast beat, but I like that kind of transitioning in just a little bit. So that's based on a beat of 120, but let's set to 130. And let's go ahead and turn our audio on so we can hear that this is actually happening on the beat. Very cool. So we've got that set up and it's moving on of that beat. Let's go ahead and do the same concept again. And I want to also be driving the position. So I'm going to go ahead and create another signal tag. I'm going to move it off to the right here. So it's past the fong tag, just to distinguish between the two. And I want to be driving the position. So just like rotation, I want to drive X, Y, and Z. So I'll grab the P and I'll drop that on the signal tag. Let's do the same thing where we add a noise tab and we want to move around in space. And I'm going to set this to one, one, one. One 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 one. So it's about a thousand moving forward. And if I hit play, you'd see that it's zipping all over the place. 
completely randomly, we want to do a time remap, just like we have been in the past. So let's go ahead and turn on time remap. And I'm actually going to just copy this other signal tag, the other BPM, again. And now we've already got those settings. I just need to relink it. So I'm going to grab the new position that we are creating, grab that time remap, and that's what we want to drive. So let's drop that on the copied beats per minute tab or tag. Drop that on. And cool, now that's being driven forward five frames every beat. So let's go ahead and give that a listen. So we are now moving forward completely randomly and changing color completely randomly based on these beats. But here's where things get interesting. I'm going to take the sphere and go copy, paste, 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 paste. Okay. We got a bunch of those pasted and they're all going to be doing the exact same thing. If I hit play, it's going to be boring. Bunch of them doing the exact same thing. But if we go and we grab our, we could do it with the beats or we could do it in the base tab. I'm going to do it in the base tab. I'm going to grab the position signal tag that we have. And let's go ahead and change the time offset. I am going to offset this time. I'm going to type in num, which is typing in the index. It's a, this is a normal Cinema 4D function because we have more than one. That's a zero, one, two, three, four. So when I type in num, it's going to feed those numbers in. So I click that and boom, we're going to get this nice offset chain of these moving around. So, okay, cool. That's laid out exactly the way I want to. Let's go ahead and grab the next one. Let's go ahead and grab the color the display color, which is this one. And let's go ahead and do the same thing. I take time, type in num. And now you can see that it's actually offset in color as well. The time has been offset in color. So let's go ahead and hit play and see what we get. Pretty cool. It's all moving forward. It's all doing its thing. And there's so many things we can go and change and tweak and just modify on this. If we were to go and grab our position tag, we can increase the speed. So I'm going to say two. And now they're moving twice as fast as they are. So they're separated more. We could go into our display color tab. And right now we just have this noise constantly progressing forward. And if we increase its speed, it's the equivalent of increasing the variation between them. So if I were to set this to something faster, like two, you're going to see more color variation. If I were to set it to three, more color Coloration. If we set this up with something big like 11, they're going to start looking pretty much completely random from each other. Meanwhile, if we went smaller like 0.5, it's going to start becoming very uniform throughout all of it. And keep in mind, you can continue to layer and layer and layer things on top of it because of this, this is signal. So we can go to our base tab in our color variation, and I'm going to add another noise. So we've got more noise color variation. So on this one, we'll do a similar thing to what we did before where I want some color variation, but I'm not going to push it as far. Before we were saying we had maximum variation, this is something I'm going to go maybe halfway. Let's give ourselves some bias, but not necessarily a ton. And right now they all have identical variation there, but I'm going to go to their random seed and let's type in num again, type in their index. So each of them has a different random seed. So now you can see that each one has got that uniform color that's being caused by this noise, but it's got a second variation of color there. So they're each also doing their own individual thing. So now we can go ahead and hit play. And they're each doing their own thing there. We can change random seeds. We can change anything. Like everything is is layerable. Everything can be modified. Like it's a completely different way of thinking about animating. I can jump into the animation tab here. And why don't we go and add another noise into the uh, positional one. And in this positional one, let's go ahead and add in a variation of 111. So about 100 on positive and negative. And I'm going to type in another random seed here for their number. So now they're all moving forward, but they also have their own individual motions going on as well. So now we're getting like this extra wiggle. So all that stuff, super crazy, super fun. Like you can layer things up. There's so many ways of manipulating this and changing it. You know, we, we could change the strength over time. We could change, I, I don't know, it just goes on. I've been obsessively playing with Signal just because it's fun for like the last two weeks. One last additional thing to mention is we've added another new button. If you go to your output, you can see down here that we've always had it twirl down your keyframe. We've always had convert to keyframes, but we've added in a new button that's driven the signal to keyframes. We had to add this in because if you're driving a signal tag with keyframes, if you keyframe anything in the signal tag, or 
if you're driving a signal tag with another signal tag, then it, it can't just do an internal calculation to do it. We actually have to play through the timeline to see what values it's being fed. So we set up a separate button. So if you click driven signal to keyframes, it has to play through the timeline to record it and convert it to keyframes if you're sending it off perhaps to a render farm that doesn't have signal or to someone who doesn't have signal. So keep in mind that that's the way you do that. But it, if you have a complicated scene, that can take a lot longer to play through because it's not doing those internal calculations. So one important final note on there as far as another new feature. So uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.